Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see by the title, today I'm going to be telling you different tips that will help make your first year of college easier for you. Um, I don't know how many tips exactly, I'm sure I'll put it in the title, because um, they're all on my phone in just a list, I didn't number the list, um, but there's quite a few. So, and these tips, personally, I feel like are not regular tips that you hear from the regular types of YouTubers telling you tips and stuff. I tried to be unique with these. Different tips you probably have not heard before and hopefully you'll find one of these tips helpful to you. So I just finished my first year of school at Ithaca College back in May and there are some things I learned that I wish I personally did to help make things just a little easier for me, save a little money, be a little smarter, things like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and let's just get into the tips. Okay, I got the list pulled up, tips to make college easier. Here we go. For college, I 100% recommend getting a five subject notebook and a five subject folder. Not every single professor that you have is gonna be so totally okay with laptops. I've had professors that have said notebook only and you don't know how many are gonna be like that or how many, there's gonna be days where they're gonna say, okay, no laptop today, like we're gonna have them closed. And if you're one of those people who wants to take notes, then you're gonna be like, well, what do I do? You're gonna need paper. Honestly, the easiest thing is to have them all in one notebook but separated by the subjects because you don't have to worry thinking, okay, do I need this notebook today or this notebook today or this notebook today? Or is that a different day? No, it's all just in one big thing. And honestly, the notebooks aren't even that big. It's like a lot of paper, but it's pretty compressed compared to how many notebooks you would have if it was all different. So you just have that in your backpack with your laptop all the time and you're set to go. And along with that folder, having the different sections Obviously, if they're giving you papers back in class, which yes, is still a thing, you can't put that into your laptop. There's no folder there for you unless you have like a special laptop case. I don't know if that's even a thing, probably. But then you have the different sections, which is easy because then you can just easily see which subject is which. So like, you know, just the basics like, oh, English is in this one pocket, math is in another. That way you can easily see instead of all cramming it in to one folder, or having a bunch of different folders, not thinking you need the folder the one day, and then you go to class and he goes, oh, remember this paper? Can you pull that out? And you're like, I don't have it. If you just easily keep it in there, then you're set to go. You don't have to worry. When you go to college, you're going to be getting your own college email. By this point, you probably have your own email that you've already set up for subscriptions and notices, and that's what's known for things. And it's gonna be kind of annoying to like have to switch between the two, especially like when you don't know how often you should be checking one or the other. So you have to, when you check the one, then you gotta check the other to make sure you didn't miss anything school related or you didn't miss a sale going on at, I don't know, Urban Outfitters, just in case, obviously. I'm not sure how every school email is set up. Mine's with Outlook, um, the web mail thing, whatever it is. Um, but I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of emails will allow you to do this. If you go into your school's email settings or your other email, whichever you choose you wanna hook up, there's a setting that you can hit forward all emails that come to this mail to another email account. So what I did is I hooked up my school email to my regular email account. That way I only have to log on to one email. That way I'm not having to check two. I can see everything both right there and I don't have to worry like, oh, now I have to log into two. It takes twice the time, whereas this will take half the time, obviously, to check just one email where everything is being sent to. The one downside of this, I would say, is that because I have my school email sent to my regular email, is that I will sometimes accidentally send an email back. If I'm sending an email to school on that account, whereas you want to be more professional and email through your school email to professors and stuff like that. So I suggest putting your regular email hooked to your school email and you only have to check that one. But it's up to you totally. Okay, by this point, if you're pretty computer savvy and everything, you probably have a Gmail account. They're one of the most popular ones that are used. And inside your Gmail account is actually a Google Drive or whatever it's called. It's kind of like Word that's on your laptop like already installed, but this is through the email. I totally recommend 
starting to just actually write your papers and everything on there, presentations, everything, because not only can you just log onto the email, it'll instantly be right there, any laptop you're on, but it puts it all in organized. They have tons of folders that you can make and create and stick them in to organize them per class and everything. And honestly, there are gonna be times where like, oh no, you forgot your laptop or your laptop is dead and you're pretty much screwed over for this presentation where you had to plug into your computer. No, you can use anyone's computer, pull up that Google Drive, like you just log into your email and pull up the Google Drive and all your documents will be there. Everything will be there, easy to print if you have to use a different computer. It's like so convenient because it, it doesn't matter where you are or what type of device you're on, like you log into your email and all your files are there and it's amazing, like it's so much easier, say you like forget to print a paper, you can run to the computer lab the hall down and print that out really quick because it's at the touch of your hands with logging into your email instead of having to go all the way back to your dorm room where you have a printer and it's hooked up to your laptop and you have to do all this. It it saves so much time and it, you can share that document with people too. So that's amazing as well. This might be a little hard for your freshman here, especially if you've already had your orientation and everything because you registered for classes then. Um, but this is a total game changer is I'm sure you've heard of it because there's a rate my teachers for high school teachers there's rate my professors which a lot of people end up actually posting on that and it honestly does give you an insight into how the teachers are it helped me actually decide between a couple teachers because a lot of colleges will have the same class but different teachers for it and you're honestly gonna want the best teacher because you're paying so much to go to the school why would you not want to at least look up who's teaching find out if there's a ton of readings you have to do find out if they're mean or nice like do you get what I'm trying to say so I just totally recommend it um, it helps me decide one of my teachers but it's not the most effective thing because if you're trying to get in a class now because of a specific teacher that class might fill up because other people might have looked or something like that or people know that she's better that actually happened to me for this semester coming up in fall okay this one might seem a little obvious but I don't ever really hear other youtubers like telling you this because it might be so obvious but I think it's just important be to say because not everyone does it which is make a friend in every single one of your classes you could be in this class that you absolutely hate and everyone around you is weird and you don't get their style or their type of people they are or they say they like weird things you need to befriend at least one person enough to get their cell phone number because if you hate that class as much as it sounds like you're not going to want to show up to that class every single time and if you're missing that class it's like not the greatest thing to go up to the professor and be like hey what i miss every so often like you're gonna want to text that friend of yours and be like hey like i wasn't feeling good like do you think you mind sharing with your notes with me you know and obviously whoa it just got super bright in here Obviously, you're gonna have to reciprocate a few times and actually show up to class and you know be nice to them in person You can't just have their number and only text them when you don't go to that class and then not talk to them in that class So this one requires a little work, which I don't even think is that bad because you want to make friends in college anyway like That's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? But like having a friend in every class like you definitely know you'll be covered if something happens You missed the class something came up or it will be like you just don't feel like going Okay, this one also, I keep saying this every single time, but this one also might be so obvious, but this one is to just help you because I didn't realize it until my first day and I don't know how I didn't realize it. And this goes for any building you go in really. Um, the floor corresponds to the door number. So say you have class in room 122, that's on the first floor. If you have class in 341, that's on the third floor. Um, but be careful because some buildings actually have a basement and that'll actually count as one. That's obviously not a ton of buildings that happened to me in the one building. I thought I was on the first floor. Turns out I wasn't. That's why I was totally confused and I couldn't even find the number. Um, but yeah, 221, second floor. So you know at least that helps give you a general understanding of what floor you're supposed to be on but besides that you're on your own okay i would say probably one of the worst things is having to take out your trash my freshman year i lived on the third floor of the dorm building that's a lot of stairs to have to go down 
take out your trash, and then walk all back up them. And it's like not the easiest thing to do. Like it, it takes a good like five minutes out of your day. Um, well, I'm here to help just try and make this a little easier. This just won't be effective for everyone. It honestly depends like where your dorm building is and where your trash cans are. Like, sorry, I'm looking in the view behind her so I can see. Like here was my building and then behind it was the trash cans and over here was where the classes were. So there were two exits on each side. You don't want to let your trash overflow for days upon days upon days, obviously. But when your trash is full and you realize you have to take it out, don't take it out then. Wait until you have to go to class. And instead of taking the quicker way out of the building to get to the class, just go out the little bit longer and walk around and you'll be passing the trash cans. So you're killing two birds with one stone. You're walking and taking out your trash and you're headed to class. There's no extra walking. There's no need to go back up the flight of stairs and it saves you, you know, some steps you have to take if you really don't want to take them like me. Cause that's what I did. Probably the biggest pet peeve of them all is getting charged for things you have in your room. Um, that like I got charged last year for having a toaster, a toaster, a toaster that cost me $10. I had to pay a $25 fee cause it was in my room and you're not allowed to have them. I didn't know. So that was my own fault, but I still want a toaster. I still want to cook my bagels. I still want my English muffins to be toasted and crispy. Okay. That's not stopping me. So find out what you can and can't have. You know, during the first inspection, that's like the trial one. If you end up having something you're not allowed to have, they let you know when they let it slide the first time, it's like a warning. Um, but after that, they are required to tell you when the inspections are. They can't randomly pop in your room and be like, inspection time. Like they have to say, hey, is it okay if we do this inspection when, um, sometimes they'll cut it close and say, hey, are you free right now? Um, say no, obviously that you can't do the inspection and obviously before you even open your door, your door's obviously always closed unless you like to leave it open. There are people like that. But look in the little people, see who it is, and then hide that toaster. If it's your RA, hide it. Like, they can't dig through your things. They can only sur surveillance the room and look and see if you have anything. And that's when you put the toaster in a little basket and tuck it in the corner where they can't see it. And you're not gonna get charged for it. And the second they're gone, pull it back out. No issue, done. Easy as that. Okay guys, those were all my tips to try and help make college easier for you in your upcoming first year or second year, whatever year it is. I hope you found one of these tips somewhat remotely helpful because um, I put a lot of work into making that list. I thought really hard about it. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because I am new and I don't have a lot of subscribers. And if you really did enjoy it, I'd really love to have you, you know, a part of this and know when I'm uploading and everything and be notified, that would be great. So thank you so much. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.